In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. All right. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Nicole O'Connor. I'm the director of the online elementary program here at Colby. And I'm thrilled to be talking about this program with you today because it is truly one of a kind. It's an amazing program. We have such passionate teachers who have made it what it is um, and a beautiful curriculum that has been developed by many, many, many experts over many, many years. So some of you may know of Colby already, but if you don't, um, why, why Colby? What's special about Colby Academy? Well, Colby Academy is a very unique homeschool in that it's a customized Catholic and classical school experience. So our students come um, and we start every week with religion class. That is the core of our identity, our Catholic identity. They read different novels about saints. We do a saint's presentation. Um, we have a virtue of the month that we're working towards. And so we're really looking to weave that Catholic identity into every aspect of what they learn. Um, and then we're also a classical school. So classical means a lot of different, it's, it's approached in many different ways. At Colby, what classical education is, is our students, um, we put a lot of emphasis on pen to paper, their, their handwriting, they're working on their penmanship, they're memorizing, they're memorizing poetry, they're learning different, um, we're, they're learning about different figures that then weave into all the subjects. In an elementary, it's so beautiful to be able to integrate the subjects because they're just, they're so naturally connected. So it's building that web that, you know, weaving that thread of salvation history through their science curriculum, through their math, through every everything they're learning so they can see the big picture and how it is connected to them being a child of God and being, um, being a devout Catholic. So... These are just some images of some of the fun things that we have going on in the online program throughout the year. There are, there are clubs the kids can join. This is a, a student in baking club, baking with her classmates. We also have a sewing club, a Lego club. Um, and so just trying to build that foundation. Uh, this picture up to the left is a young learner, a kindergartner who's working on pen to paper with her classmates in her class. So the K to one, um, K to two students are on webcam at all times so that they can show their work and really engage with their classmates. Down at the bottom, we have our Saints program, which the students love getting to day, live a day in the life of one of their favorite saints. And then of course, Catholic Schools Week, which we have coming up um, very soon. So, some specifics about the K-12 online program. Um, the K-5 to program is very unique from 6 through 12, but there are some things that are the same. So first and foremost, there is student interaction. So the students are holding discussions together. They're helping each other. They're showing each other their work. And so there's a lot of engagement between the students themselves. However, the classes are instructor-led in that classical style. So there is lecture. There is um, instruction from the teacher going on, whether it's on a whiteboard or a PowerPoint or an engaging video, um, they're instructor led and graded. It's the same high quality curriculum as our homeschool. So we use the homeschool curriculum and we adapt it into this online format. Uh, the difference between traditional homeschool and an online homeschool experience is that you're following a school schedule. So there's a school calendar that comes out. They have schoolwork in class four days a week. Um, and there are daily pacing guidelines. And then in the elementary program, we like to give them a little grace. So while there's daily pacing for their assignments, we have a Friday catch-up day, which I'll talk more about later. Um, as I mentioned, we have various clubs run by teachers and advisors that are just a blast. It's so fun to see the creative stuff that our students come up with. Um, we also in the elementary program have math lab for students who may need more remediation or practice in math. 
and we have Latin classes for our fourth and fifth graders. So we use the little Latin readers and they can do elementary Latin starting in fourth grade and then progressing into fifth. And then as we know, the students aren't the only ones who need support and social interaction and connection. And so we have parent support groups for our families as well. So there are parent support groups um, on Facebook for each grade level and then also in Schoology. So that's something to look forward to. All right. So real quick before I move on, I just want to make sure everyone can hear and see the slides okay. Would someone mind just dropping a line in the chat just to tell me we're good to go? Don't want to get too far ahead of myself before you all hear me. Uh, here and see me. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. So our program um, is split between our kinder first and second graders who have a certain format and then our third, fourth and fifth graders. The whole goal of Colby is to have this staggered approach with technology and learning so that each grade prepares them for the next. Um, and so in our K-2 program, it's a blended learning program where they'll have one teacher, one online teacher who teaches all their subjects and they have their core subjects live. So they will have religion live for 50 minutes on Mondays. They'll have math and English Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday taught in small groups based on where they're at with their reading and their phonics. And um, those are small, they're four to six students. So they get really good hands-on interaction. They're on webcam, the teacher is asking them to read, is calling on them um, to hold them accountable for what they're learning. And so they're only live about four hours for the week, one hour a day. And then there's also this little 30 minute session, which I'll talk about on another slide. That's a little lab for the kids to come in and get extra support. Now for the other subjects in kinder first and second, these subjects are very hands-on. And so these happen outside of the classroom. There are science, geography, Bible history, and art videos that the students watch and they'll do different experiments, scavenger hunts, and different, um, different projects and activities for their science and um, history or geography lessons. So that while those are not live, they still, um, are getting the instruction from their instructor and then the parent is facilitating some of the writing and the work outside of class time. Um, the enrichment labs, I'll mention those in a moment, but just opportunities to work with assignments with classmates, whether that is one of those labs, a craft, or maybe writing or reading. Um, some other enrichment opportunities that we have are the Saints Project, which I mentioned in that first slide. It's where all of our students write a first person speech as their favorite saint. They dress as that saint for the day. They come to class as that saint for the day. Um, and we get to see the, the fullness of our faith in action. Uh, we also have art, which you can sign up for, which has um, projects every month. And then we do an art showcase at the end. In the spring, just before we head off to Easter break, we host a variety show which is where um, every grade level class memorizes a classic poem and they get really dressed up, really cute in recital attire and they recite the poem to their classmates. And this year we're even inviting the high school creative writing students to come and help us with that production. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, as far as typing goes, we don't expect our kindergarten first or second graders to know how to type. That's why they have whiteboards so they can still interact, but we do have a typing program available to them so they can start just learning, you know, the basics of typing to get them ready for third grade. And our due date schedule is focused on giving a lot of flexibility to the parent in how much and when things need to be completed. So I'll go over that in detail on a future slide. So here's a little preview of our schedule for full-time K-2 students. Um, whether you're an East Coast family or a Pacific time family, you'll start at about nine o'clock your time. And so um, on Mondays, you'll have your homeroom and religion class for an hour. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we split up into our small groups. 
So whether your child is in the red group or the yellow group will, will determine whether their classes start at 9 or 10 a.m. So after they meet with their small groups for the day, they have the opportunity to attend a lab. So this past year, it was called homework hangout and they came and kind of worked through assignments. We saw a greater need for some more targeted time for the kiddos. And so now we have a reading lab on Tuesdays, a writing lab on Wednesdays, and then an enrichment lab Thursdays, which could be a social opportunity for the kids, a spiritual lab where you know they're practicing different prayers they're memorizing, they pray a rosary together, or a science lab where they are doing some more hands-on learning together um, at that final time. And the same, the same applies for the, the same schedule just repeats for our Pacific time family. So we try to create one schedule that's very Eastern Central friendly and one that's very Pacific Mountain time friendly. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and talk about, um, yes, uh, great question. So the question is, can you talk about how the groups are set, red and yellow? So um, we base it on more than just academics for the groupings. So when you apply, um, and this process is a little bit new for this upcoming year, but when you apply to Colby Academy, um, you will be given uh, a grade level assessment teacher who will schedule an appointment with you and your child will come into Adobe Connect. And this is partly to just get them to get familiar with where they'll be learning, you know, have them kind of get an opportunity to see what the virtual classroom's like. So they'll go into that virtual classroom with um, the teacher, the grade level teacher, and we'll assess them in their reading, their writing, and their math. And so just to get a big picture, and for, say it's kindergarten, it'll look different. It'll be, you know, letter sounds, number recognition, age appropriate assessment. And so the teacher will grade that assessment and make a suggested placement based on overall where they're at. In kindergarten, it very much is dependent on whether they're reading or not. Um, same with first grade. If there are, we have a group of students who are mostly reading or are very close to reading. And then we have students who are still learning letter sounds. And so that determines those groups. When you get into third, fourth and fifth, um, we base it on, okay, generally where their math is at because we wanna make sure their math groupings are similar. But then we also look with, in the first couple weeks of school at how they learn. So there are some kiddos who are great in math, but they need things explained a certain way, right? They, they might need a little more practice or they might feel a little more shy to participate. And if we see that, um, we can move students to the appropriate group. So it, it's based primarily in third, fourth and fifth on their math achievement, and then secondarily on their learning style. In K to two, it's focused primarily on their reading level, um, whether they're reading and then also that social piece of how they learn. And I will say that uh, the placement isn't set in stone. So say your child, you apply, your child is, set, your, is assessed and they're in the yellow group and they start school and they're really just not meshing with that yellow group. Either they're you know, going a little slower or they're more advanced and we are always happy to move students for the success of them in the class. Um, and the good thing is, if you look at our schedule, you know, it's a very minor change for K to two. You just flop an hour if, if you needed to move groups. For three to five, the time doesn't change at all. It's just whether they're gonna have math or English first. So if your third grader, you know, um, started in a certain group and you felt like that grouping needed to change at a certain point in the year, we would, um, we could just flip whether they had math or English first and um, they could be adjusted. So that's the long and short of it. Um, it's not different curriculum or anything like that. Everyone learns the same curriculum. Everyone has the same learning outcomes for the year, but the teachers do differentiate and target certain aspects that are needed for the students' growth or for the students to excel within those groupings. So it's just an opportunity for the teachers to really get to know their class. We place students who we think will be most successful together and then really target, okay, how's this class doing? What does this class need uh, to be prepared for the next grade and to have fun and really enjoy, enjoy what they're learning. So, um, that is our grouping. So let's talk a little bit more about the third through fifth program. Uh, third, fourth, and fifth grade, we do expect them to have a little more technology skills and a little longer attention span than our kinder first and second graders. So we step up the expectations with that in mind. So 
the live instruction is significantly more for our third, fourth, and fifth graders. They are going to have religion, math, and science taught by teacher A, and then they'll have history, English, and literature taught by another teacher. So they basically have a STEM teacher and a humanities teacher. And these are taught in small class sizes of about 15 students. And they have eight hours of live class as opposed to the four because they're meeting two hours per day. And so, as I said, um, we primarily group them by math based on that assessment from the beginning of the year and then their learning style. And um, this allows it to be a little mixed up too, though, for the, others, for the other subjects. So since we're not placing them based on every ability in every class, we still have mixed ability classes when it comes to math or religion, history, or science. And they have a homework hangout where they get to go with their classmates and work on their schoolwork um, and get help, extra help from the teacher, extra help from their classmates. And then we have um, the same enrichment opportunities as K-2 with the addition of Latin. So we start Latin in fourth grade as an additional class that you can add to their schedule. And the same due dates apply. All right. So this, as you can see, is a little more complicated than the K-2 schedule. This is the three to five schedule for next year. So on Monday, they're going to meet for their religion homeroom class for 50 minutes. And then they have a short introductory lesson of math and literature, 30 minutes each, followed by a homework hangout where it's 25 minutes. The students go in there. They can talk about their assignments for the week. The teacher may have a specific extension planned. If they're reading a lot, they might read aloud together. Um, and then they have the option, if they're a fourth grader, of adding on Latin 1 on Mondays. Uh, Tuesday, they have 50 minutes of math and 50 minutes of literature. Based on which group they're in, it'll determine whether they have math first or English first, followed by a math and science homework hangout. And then if they're a fifth grader, they can take Latin too. Wednesdays, they have science and history, followed by a humanities homework hangout. Thursday, they have math and English, followed by that homework hangout. Um, if you sign up for Math Lab, that's also available on Wednesdays. And then there's an additional homework hangout for Latin on Thursdays. So this is the Eastern Central schedule up top. And then as you see, it just repeats with our schedule two for Pacific and Mountain Timers. If you'll notice though, Math Lab is a combined schedule. So whether you're Pacific or Eastern, your Math Lab would start at 8.30 Pacific or 11.30. Eastern time. All right, I'm gonna move on to what you need. So first and foremost, classical school physical books. <laughs> You're going to need the textbooks, workbooks, and notebooks um, to be able to actively participate during live class. So those are the one of the most important things you'll order. Also technology, you need to have a good working computer. Um, sometimes Chromebooks run into issues because you can't download the Adobe Connect application onto them. So this may be changing with future updates of Adobe, but just know that Chromebooks can be a little risky in their ability to really utilize the platform in the way it was intended. Um, so just a regular laptop or desktop computer is great. You'll also need a working printer because we have the students handwrite a lot of their math tests and assignments. So you may have a, an occasional math test to print or um, a writing activity or different um, worksheets to print and then submit. You'll also need a working web webcam and headset. As the mom of a first grader, I understand how frustrating it is having your first grader wear headphones because then you can't hear anything that's going on. Um, unfortunately, the reason for that headset is absolutely necessary is because the kids echo each other. If all their mics are on and there's no headsets on, there's this terrible echo. So we've had some ways, we have some workarounds so parents can still hear the class or they can watch the recording. Um, but that headset is very necessary. And then also it's not listed on here, but you need some way to scan documents. So my favorite way, which has been so easy for our family is I just have the Google Drive app. And so anytime my child finishes their homework, I just take a picture of it on my phone, put it in my Google Drive, and then I can upload it directly 
in Schoology, there's a way to attach things from your Google Drive. So I don't have to do any emailing or shuffling. I just take the picture. It's already there ready to go when I need to submit it. Um, other way, a traditional scanner always works. There's also an app called Cam Scanner. And all that is in our orientation. So um, you'll, you'll be familiar with it once you start orientation. Um, also, we really, really encourage our elementary students to be very hands-on. Fine motor strength is so important to their writing stamina as they write those long papers when they get into middle school. And so having basic crafting supplies is very important. Crayons, watercolor, scissors, glue, um, the small whiteboard, they'll use that almost every day in math. So they need a whiteboard, a marker, an eraser. And then for our younger kids, um, especially kindergarten, Play-Doh, all of our favorite messy tool, um, Play-Doh is good to have on hand as well. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the curriculum. So the underlying subjects are the subjects they have live. So you'll notice it gradually steps up each program year. So in their kindergarten year, they have religion, language arts, math, and penmanship live. And in um, history and science are activity-based and not graded subjects. So history and science are integrated into what they're writing, into what they're reading, um, and what they're doing for the week. It's very thematic in kindergarten. When you get to first and second grade, there's religion, language arts, which consists of phonics, grammar, penmanship, and writing. And then they have math. Those are all live. Then we have the videos for science, geography, reading, spelling, and art. Third, fourth, and fifth grade, they have almost all their subjects live. So it's religion, English, literature, math, science, history, and Latin, and those are all live subjects. We do emphasize classic literature as well. They do a novel per quarter. Um, and so you'll see some of our literature selections here on the screen. The students really, really, I think the, the fan favorite, the favorite of all the years, excuse me, my presentation keeps jumping ahead, uh, is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, the fourth grade teachers do a fabulous job of teaching this novel, and they go on an adventure through Narnia. They make a little wardrobe. They have a discussion forum where they discuss, they discuss a lot of the themes and a lot of the, the chapters, and um, they have a great time. They also memorize poetry. So starting in second grade, they, they memorize poems from Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, Island of the Blue Dolphins and The Hobbit are all also favorites in fifth grade. Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The third grade team does such a good job with this particular novel because of the classical integration. So it's a great novel to talk about virtue or lack of virtue. Um, and so, you know, each character archetype representing some opposite to virtue and how to combat that. So that's a fun novel for our third graders. Um, a little preview of our art program. So if you decide um, you don't have to enroll in art if you're not a super artsy family or you don't want one more thing on your plate. But if you do have an interest in art, we use the Art Attacks curriculum. And um, there's two curriculums in Art Attacks that we utilize. So one is a technique-based curriculum where they learn basic drawing and painting techniques through videos and submissions. And another one is an art master's program where they're learning a specific artist and then they learn that artist's style and complete something in the style of the artist. And the children's work is just amazing. We use these media albums to display their work every month and what they're learning and what they're able to produce is, is really special. Um, we still have some of my daughter's paintings up. I remember the one, um, the first we did one based off of Van Gogh, the sunflowers, that was really beautiful. One of my favorites. <laughs> so that's our art program. Um, a little bit about our technology expectations. As I said, we have a gradual approach. So none really in K-2, you need to help them probably get logged on. Eventually they'll figure out how to log on themselves, um, but they need to be ready with their whiteboard and ready to participate on webcam, not necessarily type. In third, fourth, and fifth, they'll need to know how to at least type in a chat box if they have a question or type into a poll to say a short answer. Um, and then I know the fifth grade, the third and fourth grade teachers have the students handwrite most of their written assignments, but the fifth grade teachers do have them start writing papers on the computer. 
So now let's talk about the workly, the work breakdown. So um, we have a differentiated approach to work. And this is because while we are an online school, we are still very much a homeschool and we still do emphasize parent as primary educator. We know that when you're homeschooling multiple children, there has to be flexibility, but the goal of this program is to also give accountability. So there's a delicate balance at play and I feel like we're, we're getting there. It's, we have a good system um, for you to be able to have flexibility. So first, you know, there's the live component. That time is structured. Your kid has to be there. <laughs> That's the, the, the time they're in class. Um, it's interactive and in those small class sizes or small groups. Then on your own time, there's also some supplemental videos that are interactive for the kids to watch to get some additional instruction, or there's workbook or pen and paper work that has to be completed by the family on their own time. So that's to give you a little more flexibility with your time. If you have one of your kids has swimming practice, one of your other kiddos can bring their, their work with them and get it done. So then for the assignment piece, we have two different types of assignments. We have practice assignments versus check for understanding assignments. So the practice assignments are practice that are necessary for them to repeat and build the skill, but these are a, the, these have the ability for you as the parent to determine the best mode for practice. So they can be submitted for feedback, but if they're not, they're excused. So for example, my daughter has pretty severe dysgraphia. So writing takes her hours. It's very hard for her to write. She's so perseverant and she does as much as she can. But for some of those practice assignments, we have to do them orally because we'll just never get it done. So for example, they had these weekly responses in religion. It was a bunch of religion questions from our faith and life series. And so rather than having her write out every answer, since she had other writing for English, this was a practice assignment. So we talked about it at the dinner table and that worked for us really well. So that's what that practice assignment piece is. Also in math, practice assignment, say your child gets the concept and they are good. They already memorized all their math facts or, or they're doing really well. You don't need them to do that assignment every single day that week. You can skip one. Um, if you feel like it's not necessary for your child. Now, the check for understanding assignments, those are essential to assess their mastery, for the teacher to grade, to give a grade to your child, to, to form their lessons, to make sure everyone's on the same page or to see where the class is at. So these have a standard late policy. These need to be turned in by the deadline and they need to be turned in in the format the teacher requests. So you'll see it a little acronym um, next year if you join us on your assignments. PA stands for practice, meaning do it how you want. And CFU for check for understanding means this is a formal assignment that you must turn in. Okay, um, before I keep going, let me get to this question really quick. Um, religion, does it include sacrament prep? It does. So in second grade, they work through the the um, First Communion Catechism. And so they are memorizing aspects of that First Communion Catechism to prepare them for their first reconciliation and their First Communion. And so if you, um, I do have a letter that I can provide to your parish if you do sacrament prep through us and then are going to get your, um, your First Communion Reconciliation at another parish or at your home parish. Um, but it's always a good idea to just make sure that your, your parish will accept that letter and accept the Faith and Life series and the St. Joseph First Communion Catechism as the sacrament prep for your child. All right, so a little bit more about that classical pen and paper piece. So while we're a virtual school, we very much want to use technology as our friend and as a catalyst to the more real hands-on instruction. We're not a school that will digitize everything that will have multiple hours of them on a screen. There's a balance that we're always striving to keep. And so their direct instruction is online on Adobe Connect. They'll have prayer and social opportunities. They'll have videos or kickoff directions, they're grading, they might have quizzes or tests that are virtual, typing, sharing projects and memory work or um, videos that they submit. But there's a lot that happens off the screen. So their workbook assignments, their written assignments or their penmanship, their math tests or their math practice, their reading. We want physical books for their reading. 
written tests, science experiments, art projects, and then again, that memory work. They'll be singing songs all around your house <laughs> as they learn to memorize. That's a very classical thing, um, turning different memorization strategies into songs or chants. So you'll get to enjoy some of that. Uh, and so now talking about the parent role. So when you're a homeschool parent, all of it falls on you. The planning, the grading, the entertaining, the interacting, the accountability, it's all you. Um, in a virtual homeschool, you split the role with the teacher. So the teacher is providing the curriculum, the assignments, the pacing, the grading, the feedback, the interaction, the live instruction, resources, support, and then collaboration opportunities with their peers. But that doesn't mean we're totally off the hook. We still believe that parent involvement drives student success. Parent, you are the primary educator. Your knowledge of your child far surpasses anyone else's. And so you are the prime facilitator. You're facilitating that love of learning. You get to be the cheerleader and do the fun stuff. So you're just making sure your child logs in, troubleshooting their technology. You help them create some organization system. You know, make sure they have a crate of books by their desk and they have paper and their whiteboard, they're ready for class. Um, you help them with the repetition. In a classical school, you need to repeat, repeat, repeat. If they already know how to read, it doesn't matter. Make them read more. <laughs> read the same book a bunch of times. It helps them find something they didn't catch. So helping them with those math repetition, penmanship, and that offline work. Um, you are your child's advocate. So if your child is struggling, you just need to let their teacher know. You know, my child logged off of math today and started crying because she was so frustrated. Can you please check in with her next class or help her understand this concept? Um, and then the best part is since you're not planning everything, say your child loves science, you can help them dive into aspects that they really love and, and take those even further um, because there will be time for that. All right, so now just a little preview of some things that you will see in our online classrooms. So this is the webcam view in Adobe Connect. Um, it's not like Zoom where it's only webcam. There's also opportunities that you'll see. There's some other formats, but if you're a kinder first or second grader, a lot of what you'll see is all the kiddos on webcam. This is a ice cream party we had at the end of the year last, a couple years ago. Um, this is a first grade classroom. So um, she has, uh, this is Mrs. Duryea, our first grade teacher. She has the students writing, she writes a sentence starter for them and then they're gonna write on their whiteboards and show her. Um, or she's helping them work through some math exercises with a PowerPoint. Um, and then this one over here, they were memorizing at the seaside by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a third grade classroom over here. So again, you'll see there's that virtual whiteboard in Adobe Connect. Um, there's also a room for PowerPoints. There's a Q&A pod, which is anonymous or private questions to the teacher. So not every student has to see every question you have. If you have a more shy child, they can give a, a, a question to the kid, um, to the teacher just for her. Uh, fourth grade, what a fun year. They do Greece and Rome. Um, the teachers always have really fun activities. I think this was a party they had at the end of one of their units where they made masks. Um, but the kids really get to dive into that time period in a beautiful way. And so again, kids on webcam interacting um, and presenting often. This is our, another first grade teacher, Mrs. Wolf and um, bringing a lot of that live in-person classroom experience to the virtual classroom. So conducting read-alouds with the students, using a whiteboard often to, to show and point out things. And then also you'll see the whiteboard again for math with some rods. Um, she also does these great science experiment videos. They did a bean sprouting project at the beginning of last year, which the kids had a lot of fun with. All right, now here's a little peek at Schoology. Schoology is our learning management system. So that's where all of their assignments and homework goes. So as you'll notice, there is a folder that says week of February 8th to February 12th. So every week there will be a folder posted Monday at 6 a.m. that has everything for the whole week. So it's all posted Monday morning, everything for the week that you need. Then you'll see over here, there's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday due dates. 
This is the suggested pacing for the week. So you'll see it was suggested they have a practice assignment for math on Tuesday, a religion workbook page, and a CFU for their grammar. So that should be done on Tuesday because that is the best pacing. The teacher can grade it on time and get the feedback. However, if you don't get it done on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, Friday is our catch-up day. There's no classes, there's no assignments, and that's when you can turn in things without penalty if you didn't get to them earlier in the week. Um, so you'll see these are some of the types of assignments. Um, there's a little bit different organization to Schoology, whether you're a kindergarten first or second grader or a third, fourth, or fifth grader. Kindergartners have it broken up by day. So you could click on their Monday folder and all their homework for Monday is in there. For third, fourth, and fifth, they have it broken down um, by subject. So they'll have a Schoology page that is for religion, and then that'll have all their religion assignments. Um, they'll have one for English history and um, English history, what am I thinking? And literature, <laughs> sorry. And so all their assignments will be there with folders by subject, and then they'll have their Schoology page for science and math. And so to kind of streamline that in, in all grades for you as the parent, every Friday, you'll receive an update from your child's teacher and it'll include a document called a week at a glance. This is gold. It's the best document to keep you on track all year. You'll know what pages need to be ripped out for the following week, what concepts they're learning, and you'll know that the Friday before the week begins. So you'll see it's broken down by day and subject. It has CFUs highlighted. So you know, okay, those red assignments, those are my essential assignments. These are the ones we really need to prioritize. Everything else is the building blocks, the reading, the, the worksheets, and what leads up to those. So you'll receive this every week. Um, and so you'll have a, a pulse on what your child's learning and what their week will look like. All right. Well, that was a lot of information. <laughs> um, I hope that you found it informative. I am always happy to connect via email if you have more questions for me. Um, I'll put my email in the chat. Also, we just ran a couple podcast episodes where some K-2 teachers chatted about the program and some 3 through 5 teachers chatted. So if you are interested in getting those links or in connecting further, if you want to email me, I can email you the links to the podcast episodes. I can email you some links to some recorded classes for you to view. Um, so I'm happy to do that after this presentation if you give me an email um, and say hello. But for now, does any, if you have any questions from anything presented, please put the questions in the chat box and I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Let's see. All right, you know what? I might actually be able to put the podcast links. Let me see if it'll work. Here are the podcast. Oh, it's not working. So for both of those things, just go ahead and email me. So if you want the podcast links or the recorded class samples, please email me um, at the email I provided. Yes, so there is a parent account on Schoology, which will have, um, it'll connect all of your students' accounts together. So if you wanted to check grade books, you could log into your parent account and see all of your children's grade books um, with one login. But with the elementary kids, you probably will want to log into their actual account every now and again to help them um, using your children's login. Like I have something in the queue. There we go. Perfect. All right. Here is my email. It's noconnor at colby.org. So feel free to email me. Um, I have the podcast episodes that I can email to you as well as recordings from um, K to two and three to five. And I'm happy to share them with you. Sure. It's right here. There you go.
Oh, interesting. Mm. I'll do it the old fashioned way then. I will write it on this piece of paper and hold it up. All right, if you can't see it, oh, it's reversed. Wonder if I can fix that. Getting settings. There we go. Is that better? Can you see it now? And O'Connor at Colby.org. Perfect. Um, a flex student is a homeschool student. So flex student is not virtual. Um, it would be uh, a homeschool student where you have flexibility in picking your course plans um, and book selection. Perfect. Well, I look forward to hearing from those of you who have follow-up questions or who want access to the recordings or podcast episodes. Um, but that is all I have for today. So I'll go ahead and let the rest of you go. I hope to see you next year at Colby. Um, I hope to see your students and your families know that you'll be joining a beautiful, beautiful community of learners and um, we'd love to have you. <laughs> all right, have a great rest of your day and I hope to talk to many of you soon. Bye, thank you.